how often do we hear something that is anonymous yet ubiquitous? It's definitely just a new twist. It's just a portrait, portraiture for the 21st century. Scott Blake does. For more than a decade now, he's taken black and white and given it style. It started just before the Y2K computer scare. I was living in San Francisco and they said, uh, empty your ATM and fill up your bathtub. It was like end of the world, all because of zeros and ones. Zeros and ones. Computers didn't crash and neither did his art. And I'm kind of saying, you know, maybe the world wasn't so great with all these computers. You know, maybe we're less connected now that we have, you know, a million devices to connect with. Who wouldn't want to see their face in barcodes? Andy Warhol. This is probably one of my favorites is considered the first of the barcode artists. He had been painting Campbell soup cans and sort of turned the Campbell soup can on the side and was you know, painting the instructions or the ingredients and painted a barcode sort of just abstractly. That's why I did the barcode Andy Warhol with Campbell soup cans. Scott Blake took the barcodes one step further. He made the portraits interactive. It's sort of a celebration and a critique at the same time. I kind of feel like I'm, you can't, you, whenever you focus on something, you kind of, you can't help but shine light on it. The barcodes are the actual ones we'd see at the store. In this Bruce Lee piece, the barcodes represent the DVD codes to each of his 10 movies. Scan one, and it plays one of his fight scenes. But I've had like serious Bruce Lee fans come and just sit and scan every single one. Over 30 portraits. Um, Oprah Winfrey, Ozzy Osbourne, Paul Newman, uh, you know, Warren Buffett was, you know, the only local, but he's really a world-renowned person. I try and do faces that almost anyone can recognize. His Buffett piece is the most recent and most complex. There was definitely a symphony of beeping going on. So it's 80 barcodes. The Oracle of Omaha pieced together using barcodes. General Electric. From all the companies where Berkshire Hathaway has a stake. Geico, got the lizard. And any scanner will work with the portraits. The barcode on the can of Coke has been the same since the first day they put barcodes in the can of Coke. They literally have not changed that, that six-digit number. While oftentimes art is hands-off, Scott Blake encourages people to use his creations. As soon as people hear it beep, you know, they know it's barcodes. Um, and I think, if anything, they're almost afraid to touch it. You know, usually children are the first ones. If, you know, if people, if people bring their children to the art exhibit, they're the first ones to run up, grab the scanner, and start scanning barcodes. And they're like, no, no, don't break it. And I'm always like, no, please. Burlington Northern. If this gets damaged, no worries. He goes back to his computer and prints another. Barcodes are, are kind of ugly. They're, you know, they're meant to be ignored and uh, they're very utilitarian. And, you know, I figure in 100 years when I'm long gone, my barcodes will still scan. Scott Blake isn't sure about his next subject, but the possibilities are endless. There's always a barcode within arm's reach. There's probably 10 barcodes within arm's reach. You probably have a barcode somewhere on your body right now. Um, they really are everywhere. With photographer Nathan Jank, Brian Mastry, Channel 6 News. Well, Scott gives away digital prints of his work on his website, barcodeart.com. And check this out. His work is actually recognized in the latest edition of Ripley's Believe It or Not a book. It's a two-page spread, and you can find it right here. Each piece that Scott Blake creates takes up to six months to finish, and his next project may involve British influences such as the Queen, the Princess Diana, and the Beatles.